All right, let's pick up where we left off last week. Right now, there's nothing on the CNC table. We've taken the body stock off so that we can work on custom pickup covers. That's gonna be the first step. So what we wanna do is design some custom wooden pickup covers out of flame maple for some humbucker sized P90s. Yeah, so the issue is with normal sized humbuckers, when you slant them to accommodate for multi-scale, visually it just doesn't quite work. Of course, you could use seven string pickups, but those are too long. P90s are the perfect size for six string slant. Only issue is I don't want to use single coils just because of the noise factor. So I was able to source some humbucker sized P90s. These are essentially humbuckers with thinner bobbins that allow it to fit inside the enclosure of a P90. So what we're going to do is design some covers, machine them, and then once we have them, we can capture the dimensions of those wooden covers and then design our humbucker cavities on the body. So we have to start with pickups and then we'll see where it takes us from there. Let's get to it.
The issue that I ran into was these decorative inlays popped out during the machining process. What you have here is wood and a tool path made for wood. And you're introducing a foreign material, which is metal, which requires a unique end mill as well as unique tool paths. And I was essentially trying to be efficient and machining both the wood and metal at the same time, and it didn't work. But what happened was the end mill grabbed onto it and just flipped it off. The issue is when these were popped out, it took some of the wood from the center part here. A little bit here too, so when that copper popped off, it took all that out. And there's really no way I can salvage that unless I make a little piece of wood. Maybe I can do that. I don't know if I'm really willing to, but we'll see how that goes. So as this was going down with the 3D adaptive hog, I noticed a tiny little indentation in this bolted maple. So then when the ball end mill was doing its finishing pass, it exposed this flaw in the spalted maple. And it is essentially a little cavern. So there's kind of a close up of that little flaw in the spalted maple. And I think we'll be okay. I think we ought to correct for that. So I hope you saw the copper hexagon pop off during the milling process. That's exactly what happened to these two. I was able to pause the machining, grab the copper, and then flood it with super glue. So I just literally poured super glue all over it. This is a mess. I did the same thing with these two so they wouldn't pop off. Then I was able to run the tool path um, from that point where I paused it and I reduced the speed to about 90% and I held down the copper with this chopstick. And even if the wisest luthiers in the world had told me not to mix metal and wood, I would have done this anyway. There's no reward without risk, and I really wanted this to be an efficient process, even though it didn't become one. I was willing to take that risk to see if I could finish this quicker. So definitely learn from my mistakes, and that's really the only way I know how to learn, just from mistakes like this. Another reason why these are popping off during the milling process is because I was running this without lubrication. Now you don't want to use lubrication when you're working with wood because that lubrication would get into the wood. So I was running it dry and I've done that before, but these got very hot. So what's happening is the end mill is spinning, heating up the copper. The copper is getting so hot it's melting any glue that's underneath it and it's just popping right off. That's it for this week. This body's mocked up just for this outro. It has one layer of oil finish. It still hasn't cured yet. It needs a few days. When it's done curing, I'll go ahead and seal it with the nitrocellulose lacquer, and then I'll spray my satin finish over it. I've done a video on my satin finish before. I'll add a link in the description for you. 
The pickups are not assembled, they're just empty covers mocked up for this outro. But I think this is looking pretty good. I corrected for many of the mistakes I made during the machining process for the copper inlays. I corrected the flaw and the spalt back here near the arm carve. So I think it's ready to go. I think it's ready for a neck, which is the next step. So building a neck is a huge level of effort. It's gonna take weeks. There certainly won't be a neck video next week, but don't worry, there'll be other content. In the meantime, here's a sneak peek at the fretboard for the neck. It is a curly ambrosia board. It's got some really nice flame along the edges, a hint of flame along the top. But more importantly, it's got this kind of spalty look that's gonna really tie in with the top on the body. Having this pale fretboard, maybe along with a dark neck, it's gonna look really cool. Until next time, thanks for watching and take it easy.